five, four, three, two, one. The podcast will start. The Porsche Sport Podcast, powered by Porsche Center Leeds. Test drive the new Porsche Taycan and experience soul electrified. Porsche Mobile One Super Cup, Formula E, the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, 24 hour series, Porsche Carrera Cup, Endurance Motorsports, British GT, Porsche Club Great Britain, Sim Racing. The Porsche Sport Podcast. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the Porsche Sport Podcast because hot off the heels of Patrick Long and Jörg Bergmeister last week, we have a new emerging Porsche legend coming to join us today, the Flying Dutchman Larry Ten Vord, Mobile One Super Cup champion and Carrera Cup Deutschland champion. Larry, it's been a very good 2020 for you. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, pleasure to be here in the podcast. I uh, was really looking forward to it. Uh, we tried, uh, of course, to do it a little bit earlier, but it was a crazy season. Of course, with all the, the, yeah, the uh, Corona, COVID-19, uh, uh, what was going on. And uh, then at the beginning of the season, yeah, is, is everything going, going to start? And then in the middle of the season, it went uh, green. And uh, after that, I, I did been home a lot. Uh, I raced in the, in the Porsche Mobile One Super Cup. I did the Porsche Carrera Cup Germany Championship, and I did also uh, the Porsche 911 Hours R, one of the biggest and, and ni- nicest and loudest cars there is uh, in the WEC uh, Championship, uh, only select races. Uh, and yeah, it's it's been a great year. It's been a mega year. It's been a tough year. And uh, yeah, we're already at the end of the year now. And now we can look back at a, at a great motorsport year uh, for, uh, of course, my results. But of course, it was a difficult one with all the COVID-19 situation stuff. Oh, you certainly uh, made it a good year, despite all that going on in the background. Now, I know as you're a, uh, I know you're a, a devout Dutchman, and uh, I want to get the hard-hitting questions out of the way first. So this is a very important question. Would you say which is best, a Kip Sate, the Bitterballen, the Croquette, or the Frickendale? Frickendale special. And that's your favorite, the freaking there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and wait, wait. And uh, at the McDonald's, a Met Croquette. We even have at the McDonald's in Netherlands, we have a Met. Uh, that's, a be- that's the best I've had one it. ever. Oh, that's, that's the one yeah. in the bread, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that one is even higher than the freaking Del Special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, it's good. You could enjoy those in the off season, I suppose, a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Flat out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you mentioned, obviously, it was uh, a really good season in the Mobile One Super Cup, but very much condensed into a short space of time. What were your, I, I'm sure it all went by in a blur. What were some of the highlights of the season for you? Uh, to start with, it was a, a um, uh, yeah one one big highlight season because uh, it was with a new team. It was now my Turkey in the Mobile One Super Cup. I had some good years before, some good podiums, uh, close to the wins, uh, close to the championship last year. But I missed that that, that little bit, and uh, it came this year together. But the nice thing was it was with a new team, Team GP League. It's from the Netherlands. Uh, we were a complete Dutch team. And the nicest thing was not only yeah uh, that we that we went champion in their first year, uh, but also to rebuild the whole team and building the whole team in one year time or even in a half year time, you have to say. And of course, the one of the highlights was uh, the start of the season, uh, the first race uh, was a really good one, and that everything came together and, and the good race. Uh, but uh, the speed was not good there. Uh, yeah, uh, first race was in P4 position, qualified at P8. Of course, not the positions where we used to, but it didn't feel right. And uh, uh, we didn't have the balance in the car and we were really struggling to find the right setup. Uh, also with the team, we still had to be on one line, but we kept working on ourselves. And the, the biggest highlight was uh, yeah, the, the big win in Silverstone. Uh, won the race with uh, plus 11 seconds. I think wow. uh, one big history in, uh, yeah, in, in the Super Cup. Normally it's so close with tents and, and half a tents. It was a really special one also for the team because it was a one-two. I also read my teammate Max was Splinteren. He went rookie champion this year. Uh, we went second in the team championship uh, by close uh, with our big rivals, uh, Legner Racing. Of course, uh, 
big name in the whole motorsport uh, Porsche scene and in Super Cups. They won uh, from the last 10 years, eight years. So it was a big, big achievement for us to, uh, to win the championship. Uh, and of course, for myself as a driver, I had, it was Monza because uh, it was, I was P2 in the championship, four points less, and it was all or nothing. I had to win. And uh, I said to myself, uh, I'm going to win. And it's either win or it's going to be the gravel bed. So uh, <laughs> uh, in the end, we won it. And uh, the qualifier was a mega lap. And then in the race, I could win it with two seconds in front. And yeah, that was just uh, pure emotion. It was like the hard work, the dedication. Never give up. Had the good vision. Uh, had also some rough years, some trouble years. Uh, but yeah, in the end, I was standing there and was like, yeah, this is why I'm doing it. So yeah. And how how important was it, not only a new team, but how important was it for you to do that with a Dutch team to win the Mobile One Super Cup? It's on such a big stage, going there with the Formula One guys. How big was it to to lead a new Dutch team to, to that level of success? Yeah, great. Uh, because also what the nice thing is about GP is that they're really passionate. Eh? They really like every guy in the team was standing one way. Uh, they were like little things. Uh, um, uh, it was, it's, of course, in the beginning, everyone drink like coffee. And then in the middle of the year, every, everyone was like drinking tea. And also the mechanics started to uh, uh, don't drink any alcohol over the whole season. And uh, also with my mechanic, uh, Hank, he did a mega job. And he was like, okay, if you're going to do it, Larry, I'm going to do it also. And it felt like a big team spirit. And it felt like, okay, we are really in this together. And, and to, from the tracky, Till the tire guy, till till the engineer, we all were one same line, and and we worked our ass off, and uh, uh, that was a really special one to win it also for the team, uh, and for me was it was of course great. Uh, uh, yeah, my third year, of course, everyone was expecting. Okay, you have to be winning now because it has to be important for your career. But I was looking. I don't want to win it. I want to dominate it. I want to dominate. I want to. I show that I'm the best in everything uh, on the track, next to the track, uh, uh, when I'm not at the track. I want to be, be the best in everything. I want to be the greatest world-class racing driver I can be myself. And uh, that's what I worked out with my team this year. Uh, we had to find a motto. And the motto was, what I said was, uh, be the world, be the greatest world-class racing driver you can be on and off track. Yeah, and, and that helped me a lot. I was continue working on myself to improve myself, uh, yeah, uh, have a good schedule uh, during the weekend, but also before the weekends. Yeah, and then in the end it comes, yeah, you get a victory, you get a championship that was, yeah, hard work space off. So uh, that was great. <laughs> and I said, that's a big commitment to ask a Dutch team to stop drinking coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yes, everyone, yeah. Not, 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 not everyone was it, but uh, <laughs> my mechanic was like, okay, I'm going to do the same. Yeah, because he liked it. He said to me, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what you, you're going to do, Larry. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a great one. It was a great spirit. And everyone, also from from the other mechanics, they were we on one line. So uh, it was a nice feeling. It was it, it felt like winning together. Oh, that's fantastic! And of course, when when you you had a you know a great time going to Le Mans, winning the Carrera Cup race there, and then hopping into the RSR for the for yeah. the race. What was that like? To not only two different cars, but it's a long race anyway. Tell us about that experience. Ah, uh, uh, one word: exhausted. Uh, I was tired. I was. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I put it my all on the track and also with the Carrera Cup race it was amazing that we won it there and uh, it was a great fight and uh, also in the rain I, I did say we were not the strongest car over that, that weekend and we were also not the strong, strongest car on the straights so in the end to win it there was a lot of uh, giving any energy away and, 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 and push it to the end Yeah, and then, then I won it that was crazy but uh, five minutes later when I was on the podium five minutes later I was doing my driver change in my Carrera Cup suit uh, in the RSR already uh, because we had a tight schedule to the starting of the race so I could not celebrate it a lot uh, Yeah, and then it was just going flat out and started a 24 hours race we had a really great race uh, we had some penalties, what cost us in the end, uh, I think, the fight for the win and uh, yeah, fight for P2 position because we were P2 to the last half an hour. Uh, I think we didn't have the new ties like the other guys did, so Matteo could not hold the position. Give, he gave it his all and he tried. But uh, yeah, in the end, was a P4 for the, my first 24 hours ever. Uh, I tried at the beginning of the year with Dubai, but that stopped after seven hours. Where there was such a big uh, rain and I was sitting in the garage sleeping and they pulled me out because the water was coming in. <laughs> so uh, 
Yeah, so that was that was a different experience, but the, the, this 24 hours was a great one. Uh, I, I enjoyed every lap. I enjoyed every thing what I could do. Of course, my body was a bit of tired and my mind, but uh, yeah, when you're in the car driving one lap, you you back in the game. So it was a great, great one. <clears throat> Uh, of course, you've you've had so much success with the Porsche brands, both in the One Make series with the Carrera Cup and also racing in the the WEC against the other manufacturers. From from what I've read about you, it seems to me that endurance racing is very much a goal for the future. Would that be correct? And um, what do you want? What's the next goals ahead? You now that you've got the Super Cup behind you, what's uh, what do you want to move on to do? Um, uh, not not behind me. My vision is uh, wanna I want to win it again. It's, okay. It's uh, my biggest biggest vision. I won it uh, multiple times, um, because I want to show I'm the the uh, yeah the best in that. Um, <laughs> of course, challenge myself and eh? not not putting outside that I'm the best, but challenge myself every every step more, because it's great that you become champion, but to become champion again, that's a new mm-hmm. step and that's a new level, and I want to mm-hmm. achieve that level. And um, of course, the WC, the 24 hours of Le Mans is still on my uh, list to win it, and. Uh, I hope we could do it uh, this year, but it didn't work out. So, uh, uh, yeah, I keep fighting for that uh, until also I achieve that goal. And still, so is one of my vision is the DTM. Uh, I put that uh, vision in 2013, 2014, when I was in a really difficult time where no racing was anymore, and I was cleaning cars and I was uh, working on uh, on Zandvoort uh, with uh, putting the cones straight and uh, uh, yeah, inspecting the track and uh, giving people coffee and standing really at the bottom uh and uh, uh yeah it's still a vision also for me it's not at the moment on manitou because the dtm it's a bit difficult how the situation is and mm-hmm. where they're going to be i hope this series will not be to the end because it's a really nice one it has a lot of history uh, but we will see uh, i'm still young uh still a great future ahead and i keep pushing i keep pushing i keep pushing every day uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a busy guy, but I love it. It's 24 seven racing. So, uh, yeah, um, that's it. <laughs> yeah, of course. And you mentioned, Ger- obviously the DTM being, oh, it's got such an amazing heritage in history in Germany. And obviously you, you live in, in Enschede, which is not too far from the German border from, uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, I noticed that a lot of your karting, you have four karting titles in, in Germany. Is, is Germany always played a strong part of your racing career? And is that where the ambition for the DTM and stuff comes from? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Also because I love the DTM, the, 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 the hard fighting and uh, a little bit of rubbing. And uh, it's like the cup car <laughs> driving. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are great drivers in there, like Rene Ross, he's a real legend. Philip Eng is a, a real legend. And of course, uh, yeah, Robin Freins and, and Gosa one. Uh, that's a big list. Um, yeah, uh, the, the thing was, of course, near to the border. Um, I, yeah, I grown up in Germany uh, on the race, on the karting track. Um, I, I started there at Kart Park in Buren. Really German sound, <laughs> and uh, it was with a, like a family team and started there uh, learning because in the beginning uh, my dad always said who breaks who lose, so I was more on the tire barriers than on track. <laughs> so I also had to learn a little bit to break, and I, I went to their school. It was not an easy one; it was a uh, quite tough one, big discipline always. But uh, I'm happy that I went that way, and uh, uh, yeah, it was great years, and I, I did it, and then I try to get in formal sport in 2012. Did it in 2013, two races 2014, but the budget just went went away and uh, it was not possible anymore. Also from home, we had a, we had a tough situation. Um, so yeah, it's, it stopped there. The, it was just like, boom, the book is closed and uh, yeah, what are you going to do now? Uh, of course, me with my head, I only had plan E. I didn't have plan B or C or D. I only saw my back in a car and uh, don't ask me how or what I was going to do it. I, I didn't know how in that moment, but I kept going and uh, I, I put everything on the track and I, I, I slept at the track. I slept in the car. I was like, oh, this is what I want. I want to be back in the car and I, I keep pushing with that. And if I have to clean this car for that, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, it was a great one. And of, of course, uh, there's there's so many there's so many great drivers. Of course, they've come from the Netherlands, like Jeroen Blakemolen, who you've driven with and won with, of course, and uh, yeah. Jan Lammers, etc. A lot in the endurance racing world. 
obviously working at Zandvoort as well, was there any kind of support locally to try and help you get back on there? Or did you have to look further afield to get back on that path to, to, to success again? No, the, the, you still hear me, right? I can still hear you. I've lost uh, the nice. picture, but, but carry on. That's Don't worry. Okay, okay good. Um, yeah, the nicest thing was, okay, in the end, in that moment, it was not a nice thing. But for me, it was the nicest thing is I did everything in Germany. So the Netherlands was completely new for me. When I went to the Netherlands and did my coaching, um, uh, nobody knew me. And uh, I was completely new. I was that Dutch guy coming from the East, uh, had that strange accent. <laughs> yeah, well, what is what is he what is he doing here? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I had to build it completely new. Everyone who I know in the outer sport, it's it started in 2014, uh, and they're getting yeah more uh, known to the outside. Jeroen, I know not so long ago. I know him from uh, last year, Bahrain, because uh, he's in the car with Ben Keating, a great great American uh, uh, motorsport uh, guy and the quick guy also, as a gentleman mm-hmm. driver. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he's a great guy. And um, uh, uh, they had uh, they were driven with uh, Felipe Fraga, and he was silver. And I was at that moment also silver driver. And they were looking for one to help, yeah, because he he was still driving the Brazilian championship. So uh, yeah, and that's how I get in. And you won't help me with the seat. And uh, yeah, it was crazy because the first race we went P2 in Shanghai, and then the second race we won it in Bahrain. So it was a really great experience. And I won it this year again, but not with them. I won it with uh, Egidio and Jörg Bergmeister, who was in the podcast last week. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's how, the, the, how the story went. But uh, when I started, well, nobody knew me in the Netherlands. It was completely new, completely. <laughs> wow. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, and, of course, they will now, of course, with the Super Cup. Uh, in Here in the UK, we have the Super Cup is... Uh, broadcast in the same channel as the Formula One. Is that the same in yep. the Netherlands? So people tune in to see Max and then they see you also? Uh, yes. Uh, I need to say this year was really strong because we even had a, a front, or how you say it, like a, a, um, a like a front program. So yes, we also, sure. We also, we also had a head race, but we had a nice uh, uh, before uh, television with uh, um, um, uh, Robert Dorenbosch, uh, yes. uh, Ro- mm-hmm. Robert Campos, yeah, and yeah, that was uh, that was nice uh, because they really helped us and they pushed. And it was from Sego. Uh, yeah, we had great, great, great viewers. I think we had one time we had two hundred sixty thousand people watching the Super Cup race. Wow! Uh, it was at Spa, and we were really in front of the Formula One. We were behind the Formula One. We were the second uh, yeah, uh, biggest viewers we had. So it was great. It was great. We had a really good uh, push here. Also for the Super Cup in the Netherlands, it was a good year for that. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! And just moving, yeah. moving, looking at looking ahead to to next year. Of course, you've had some some brilliant races in the old version of the RSR, the RSR seventeen, the really high pitched screaming sound. The new car sounds totally different. Have you had a chance to drive the new RSR nineteen yet? No, I know a few guys had, but I didn't. Uh, I only drove the the old, uh, the or the older the the two seventeen car. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still a great, great one. And yeah, I'm looking forward when I get the opportunity to drive also in the new one, how, how the difference will be. Of course, the sound is a little bit uh, less deadly, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we will see. We will see. Uh, I'm enjoying uh, every car I drive. I can I can imagine, of course, with with the you've you've done all of your endurance racing has been in the kind of pro am category. How do you find it? You mentioned Ben Keating, who I totally agree with you is one of the best amateur drivers. I think in the world right now, uh, yeah. true true amateur drivers. You know, there's it's sometimes a little bit confusing who's an amateur and who's yeah. not. But uh, yeah. the um, how do you find that experience of where I know you you mentioned you coach a lot of guys. How do you find that experience? Is that something you enjoy? Yeah, a lot. A lot. Uh, nicest thing is also in the, yeah, I have to go back to 2014, 14, 15. I did a lot of coaching. Mm-hmm. I also was a car mechanic and a coach at the same time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've, I've tried coaching a lot of people. I coach young guys from 15, 14. I coach guys from 55, 60 to 70. So uh, yeah, then he is a young guy. I'm now 24. And they're like, oh, okay, he's going to coach me. <laughs> but it's uh, I love it I love it also the 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 guys who are really successful in in their business uh, also doing for hobby for fun mm-hmm. uh, doing this racing or yeah some, uh, um, that's that's great because they have the passion for it and they also open to learn and they want to learn it doesn't matter how old you are they are like yeah 
And I have always the feeling also with these guys uh, who are a bit older, they don't feel like old. They're really like young and they want to push and uh, they go they go running, they go sporting, just be fit in the car, you know? So you're like, oh, great. That's uh, always a group, a great uh, group together. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. that's, that sounds like a, a lot, a lot of fun. Now, just a, a couple of uh, a couple of quick ones uh, f- for you, uh, Larry. Um, Assen or Zandvoort, if you had to choose between the two, which is your favourite? Well, oh, it's a difficult one. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love them both. I love them both. Uh, I love them both. Uh, but the first track I was was Zandvoort, so I go mm-hmm. for that one. Yeah, I can see you've got to be diplomatic there. You don't want to upset anybody. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Because, because I, I, I love them both. So if I can uh, do, say, double, I will. It's Assen and Zenford. Yeah. Have you been to the TT at Assen? Never. Never? Ah, no, okay. No, no. Ah, I went last I year and we had a good party. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. The um, have you? Of course, you've been driving for, in Porsche racing cars for the last couple of years. Uh, have you had much experience of the road product in the last little while? Uh, yes, of course, not so much as a race car because I think I'm sitting more in a race car than in a real car. Uh, uh, but I had some some good uh, cars where I could try, like the GT3 RS, GT2 uh, RS, uh, like the 992. It's a really great car. Uh, I didn't not drove it myself, but the new Taycan mm-hmm. uh, sitting next to it. It's unbelievable how quick that one goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and of course the Macans, the Cayennes. Uh, of course, I had, had experience with that uh, because I also did from Netherlands out. Uh, we have like a yeah, Porsche driving experience, mm-hmm. and uh, I was then sitting extra instructor and in driving with the uh, with the people on the track and off roads and uh, uh, yeah, uh, driving around cones. So, yeah. Uh, Drove those all lot. Which yeah. has been the favorite of the uh, of them all? Yeah, I love the GT2 RS a lot uh, because it's unbelievable. The first one, I, I I pushed the pedal down. It was like you get in a tunnel. <laughs> it goes <laughs> it goes so quick. That's unbelievable. That's that's really great. And what I really love is also GT4 uh, because mm-hmm. I love the car a lot from the handling. And that is the car. Yeah, my first Porsche car I drove for since 2016 with the GT4. When I get back into racing. Uh, that was a great car. It was a really uh, great car to start with. And uh, I always say everyone, uh, when they really don't have a lot of experience, start with GT4 because it's a great car to learn. It's a beautiful machine. Yeah, it's, be- it's funny. Yeah. You should all the... We had uh, Esme Hockey who races in the uh, British Carrera Cup a couple of weeks ago, and she yeah. said the GT2 RS. Kat, uh, my co-host, her favorite is the GT2 RS. So all of you mm-hmm. racing drivers, you're all the same. You want the one with the most power, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it, yeah. It's, like that. it's all about yeah. the, the, the horsepower. Now, finally, before before we let you go, and it's a question we ask uh, everyone who comes on the show, we call it the Racing Genie question. So it's like a, we, the Racing Genie gives you a wish, and you, ha- you can choose any car in history to compete in any race in history, and you can pick any co-driver you like who would you choose for for that combination well that's a good uh, history car doesn't matter which car any any time you want yeah any car you want that's a good one i'm thinking about it you know (laughs) um yeah it's a great one great question is everyone thinking so long about it, or? Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would like to see. Uh, it's a bit. I don't know. The same question or answer that like everyone. I. I want to see if it were uh, Senna in a in the cup car. Ayrton Senna yeah. in the cup car. Wow, yeah. that's a completely original answer, actually. And oh, uh, nice, which, nice. which track would you would you like to do that with him? Ah, uh, Monaco. 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 Wow, that's yeah. a thought. Larry Tenvord and Ayrton Senna in cup cars at Monaco. What could possibly go wrong? Nothing. nothing, nothing. <laughs> I I did Monaco now two years, uh, two yeah. times. I was uh, I pole position last year, but it got uh, deleted because I drove a little bit too quick on the yellow. Uh, but I went P3 in the end, and uh, it's a great track. It's unbelievable. The first year, I, I was shaking. I was shaking. I could not hold my breath. I was holding my breath in the in the quick corner, in the tunnel. Uh, it's a great 
great track to drive. And I was, I was sad, sadly, that uh, we didn't drove there this year. But uh, it looks like we're going to be starting in 2021 in uh, Monaco. So that will make every, everything good. Well, that's, a, that's an amazing first race to, to take part in. You need to be awake straight away. Maybe you need, to go back, you need to be, go back to the coffee for qualifying for, yeah. for that. <laughs> and, and, and a nice thing to add is uh, that uh, we had a great time with the 911 uh, uh, Gen Jun car, but the new chapter is starting with the 992. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw the car, never drove it yet, but uh, it's amazing. It's a great machine. It's unbelievable. I can't wait to... My hands are already sweating to, to drive it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's completely a new step. It's, uh, it's a really new chapter. Porsche did well, a really good job there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we're, we're very excited here at Porsche Sport to see you in the car. And uh, Larry, you've had an amazing 2020 season and we wish you all the very best of luck for 2021 and can't wait to see you in action. Thank you very much also for having me. No problem at all. Thank you. The Porsche Sport Podcast, powered by Porsche Centre Leeds. Test drive the new Porsche Taycan and experience soul electrified.